Thank you very much for the opportunity to be on this show with you. My name is Eddie Fon and I, I am a copywriter. First of all, I come from Akwa Ibom State in Nigeria. Hi, I'm Obehi Ewanfo, the author of the storytelling series for small businesses and content creators. In Obehi Podcast, we talk about the power of your story, your narrative, and why you should own your voice. Whether you are a small business owner, a content entrepreneur, or you simply want to build your influence, storytelling is probably going to be your best instrument to connect with your audience. So join the awakened few who are owning their voices. Now let's get started with today's episode. and I help personal brands and startups to optimize their profit through effective and irresistible copywriting. And I've been doing this for a period of two years as something that I do by the side anyway, because I've been involved in a very, uh, very many things in the past two years. And this is one of them. Fond memories about my childhood is the closely knitted family that I come from. So we we are closely knitted as a family and we always have fun together. I and my siblings and I and my parents. So basically, that's it. We just, okay, growing up in Calabar, I went to um, secondary school. And actually, I didn't actually grow up in Calabar because many people just think or always associate Akwaibom with Calabar. We, we used to be together, but Akwaibom is different from Cross River because Cross River is Calabar and Akwaibom is Uyo. Yes, so growing up in Akwaibom, I had a closely knitted family, a very, very strong Christian values and all of that. Typical of an African home, you know what I mean. So basically, <laughs> I, I, the fun memories was just around playing with my siblings, you know, going to the boarding house, coming back for holiday and all of that. I, I always liked to write when I was a child. I used to write a lot. So I already had this underlying passion or interest, I would say, in writing. But what really made me to dive into copywriting was in 2020, during the COVID year, and everything, well, everybody, you know, we were on lockdown. And the thing was, you have to just learn a digital skill or something. So because I already had this underlying interest in writing, and when, I think I, I saw an advert actually talking about copywriting and what copywriting is all about. And I was interested. I said, okay, let me try this training. You know, it was the very first time I heard about copywriting. So I tried, I got the certification. And when I got trained, I was like, wow, I never knew there's something like this. I've never known that there's a type of writing called copywriting and all of that. So I just knew content because it was actually more popular. Content writing was more popular than copywriting. So when I learned about copywriting and everything, I took it seriously. I, I remember that time I would go online, I will watch a lot of YouTube videos on copywriting, I will read a lot of stuff on copywriting, and then I'll try out writing copies for myself or for other people and all of that. And, and then I'll write and then send to my coach then and say, okay, what do you think of this copy? And I'll, I'll just be getting feedback from from him and all of that so that's how i dived into copywriting it's i have this online interest in writing generally but then when covid came and i just had to learn a digital skill well i i now dived into copywriting and i kept myself busy with that all right that's interesting uh now for people who don't understand what is meant by copywriting uh what do you have to say about that okay first of all it is very common for people not to really understand what copywriting is, but they will know what writing or any other kind of writing is like creative writing or content writing. So I would say that copywriting is your ability to use written words to persuade a person to take an action that you want them to take. That's basically what copywriting is all about. So the thing is, people usually confuse it with content, right? But there are a few differences between copywriting and content writing. So that's it. 
Copywriting helps you to influence a person, especially a prospect, to take an action that you want them to take. And usually, it's a buying action. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, all right. That, that is clear. Uh, now, maybe looking at the, the Nigerian economy, for example, uh, how much of copywriting is actually uh, going on there within the market? By that, I mean, uh, how much are people um, interested in the job of a copywriter? What do you have to say about that? Okay, first of all, people don't even know, there are many people who don't even know they need a copywriter, that's the truth. They, 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 will just, they just think it is um, content and all of that. But I think recently, people are more enlightened, brands are getting understanding that, you know what, if I have to sell, I need someone that would, you know, pour out or have the skill of a copywriter or have a copywriting skill and then be able to use it to influence people influence my audience my followers or potential buyers whatever name you would call them to engage with your brand to act in the way you would want them to act when it has to do with your brand and all of that so these days people are getting more enlightened people so copywriters are now really needed especially in you know especially in all these cryptocurrency spaces they really need copywriters right now and other tech aspect of the of the internet so there's there's increased awareness on the on copywriting and the need for copywriters now but how is it important how is it simple for you to get a client for your job because you are in the copywriting uh, sector uh, sometimes you need to meet people and tell them hey i will be able to write your copy for you and sometimes you might actually be talking to maybe people who are very good in writing uh, but okay, there is a difference between writing and knowing how to write to sell, write a, a kind of uh, uh, a sales copy, as you will call it. No, so how do you manage to get clients to sort of convince them that you are going to do the job for them? Okay, when I restarted initially, I started with doing free stuff. I thought we doing free writing because I knew that, you know what, nobody is really going to listen to me because I'm very new. So when I started, I would just write a copy. If I see somebody, for example, there was this lady I saw and she was trying to sell a book online. And I told her, you know what, I'm going to write a copy for you. I'm going to set up the link and everything that you need. And I'll just give it to you for free. And I did that for her. And she read through the copy and the link and everything. And she sent it out. And she was very excited that this is a book she was struggling to sell. And that by that simple copy I wrote for her, it wasn't something so you know big. It wasn't even a, a, a sales page. It was just a copy that she had to post on her normal WhatsApp status. The same people that have been reading this, her WhatsApp status, and have been seeing the book she's been putting out all this while, saw the same book again, but this time around saw the copy that I wrote and they took action. They started paying for the same book she has been shouting, please come and buy, get my book. It does this, it does that, and all of that. So I started out for free and I got those free, oh, you, you are doing so well. Thank you so much. Your copy really helped me to grow. So I got all those little reviews and all of that. And I now used it to get someone, to get other people because Usually that happened by a referral because after that she told me, ah, oh, you really know what you are doing. There's someone that's even looking for someone like this and I would like you to just help this person out. And that's how it started. But when I really started, I wrote a lot of things for free. I wasn't really under pressure. I wanted to really grow. I wanted to master the skill. I wanted to understand what I was doing. And then I started out free helping people. Then the second thing I also did, I remember that time was that I wanted to to organize a WhatsApp class. And so I said, I want to I want to see the effectiveness of my own copy. And I wasn't going to teach them copywriting. It was nothing copywriting. It was something else entirely that I even had to partner with someone else to just have a, a, a WhatsApp class that would be paid WhatsApp class. So when it was time to sell that class, I wrote a copy. I just sat down and wrote a copy that I would present to the uh, to the people I had already taught the free, you know, the free class, we were teaching together. And I saw that when I wrote all these things, I just kept, you know, you know, the flow of a copy from the headline to the call to action. And then I sent it and people were reading it. And as they read through the copy, they were taking action. They were taking action and they were just buying and, you know, you know, 
Buying and buying and buying. So when I saw that, I said, wow, this copywriting really works. I'm able to influence people. I presented the copy to the free class that I, I had already thought because it was a partnership kind of thing. And I saw people were just buying the, the course. They were paying for the class and all of that. So I was like, oh, wow, this really, really works. So I can influence people in this direction to give me their value in exchange for the value I had to offer. So that that further made me to understand that you know what you're doing, you know, you know what you're doing, and you are also improving on yourself by being able to, because this is results that I can actually present to someone else and say, look, I was able to sell my class so I can sell your stuff too. So that's how I started. Hmm. All right. That's really very interesting. Um, now, uh, what do you want to say about the strategy to uh, get a better copywriting job done? Uh, say maybe somebody uh, give you a job to do now, or maybe even yourself, or like the example that you gave just now, uh, of you writing a good copywriting. How do you approach copywriting as it were? First of all, you know, copywriting is, the, one of the approaches I use is that I talk to my prospects one-on-one, -on -one in my copy. I know that when you send a copy online or on a sales page or on social media, anywhere at all, you are, you are writing to many people. But the truth is that you are writing to one person. It's one person that is reading it per time. So because of that, a copy is converse, conversational. So I am talking to you and so I'll be referring to you and I, you and I, if I am going to have to bring myself into the conversation. So a, one of the strategies in writing a good copy is being conversational. Another strategy is research, research, research. Truth is, there is no, nothing new. We just do something in a different way and we use different methods and keep recycling the same thing. So the most important thing is research. Before you put your copy out or you write a copy, there is someone else's copy that has worked before for the same kind of audience that you are trying to write for. So research, take your time and look into other copies that have worked. And a collection of the co copies that have worked before is called a swipe file. So a copywriter should have a swipe file. You should have ads that have worked or converted before. You should have sales pages that have converted before. You should have, you know, all of that in your collection to be able to, you know, get inspiration from to write a copy that will convert. So be conversational, be, do your research, and then let your headline be attention grabbing because nowadays on the internet, the attention span is so, so short. So if you are able to get the attention of your prospects earlier on. The thing is that the competition online is an attention competition. Everything is competing for attention. All the customers, the clients, and every all the brands are competing for attention. So a good copywriter should take this into consideration that, you know what, my copy is going to be competing for the attention of my client. So I have to put out a headline that speaks directly to them and grabs their attention. So these are the few strategies to put in place when you're trying to write a copy. You see, we met actually in the LICTI audio event that I organized uh, last week, yeah, where we talk about storytelling. And because we are talking of strategy here, uh, would you want to tell me how, uh, how important is storytelling in what you do? Or if anything, if it is uh, a strategy that you employ in your copywriting, what do you have to say about that? Yes, thank you for that question. Yes, yeah, storytelling is a strategy that works every time in copywriting because a good story, the thing is that stories stories can be fiction or non-fiction, but stories will always relate or speak to human beings, humans, humans' emotions. It will always speak to us because the thing is that when you're presenting prospects or your audience with fact, fact can lie. Stories don't lie. The reason why stories don't lie is that it can be fiction or non-fiction, you know. So it, you, it, it, it can be fiction or non-fiction. So it can be a lie. That's the truth. So storytelling and copywriting is a very important, is a very important thing to incorporate into your copywriting. Being able to tell your brand story or being able to tell the story about your product that is memorable to your audience and it 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 keeps their attention on the copy. Usually. A story in copywriting is 
you know, the part of the copy that captures the story is usually the hook because you, you want to get your prospect or your audience hooked on your copy. So usually that part is what encapsulates the story or the, the story is encapsulated in the hook part of it. And the hook part is like the opening statement or something that your prospects see or read after the headline. So by the time you are able to tell your brand story in such a way that it is very compelling, it will help people to buy. Now I, ha I have this example, there's a story I told one time in a copy that really converted and it was a personal story. I was trying to sell people a course that will help them make money online. It was an Amazon publishing course and all of that because I, because I had done something like that before. So I was trying to teach people how to get their books published on Amazon. And what I did was that I told a story and the story is actually true story. So I, I, I came with this story with the headline, why my uncle called me a Yahoo girl. Now, <laughs> yes, and it is true because in 2020, when I started the whole copywriting earlier on and towards the middle of 2020 or COVID, um, end of COVID and all that, I was making some money online because that's when I started, you know, doing copywriting and all of that. So. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't leave my house and I'll stay at home, of course, lockdown and everything. But then I I I will have some money and then I, I hadn't gone for youth service, so quite young and all of that. So the, a, a time came when my uncle spoke with one of my um um aunties and she he now said Ediphon is now doing Yahoo Yahoo. It was a play kind of talk, a, a joke, but then I converted that into a story when I was trying to sell the course, I said, why my uncle called me a Yahoo girl? And then I started telling them a story of how my uncle called me a Yahoo girl just because I sat in my house and I was making some money without him seeing me going out and all of that. And I was making it in the comfort of my house and all of that. That story resonated with many people in the group. And I just saw them after, you know, when I, I dropped the call to action, the next thing they should do, I saw people literally paying for what I was asking them to pay for because I told a simple story that resonated with them and some people don't even know was it true or was it not that's the truth they don't know is it a fiction is it non-fiction are you just being truthful or not but that's the power of a story that's the power of a story it speaks to emotions it makes people to relate and connect with you in a in a deeper level and so they don't even bother to ask oh what did it really happen? Did it not happen? Because when it has to do with storytelling, any writer is free to express themselves, whether it, whether you, you whether it is fiction or non-fiction. But when you are presenting facts and statements, they have to always be true. All oh, right, that's interesting. That's really very interesting. Uh, any person that is um, that is listening to you definitely will pay attention to that. All right. Talking of client, talking of the kind of copy that you uh, that you write, do you write any type of copy, or do you have specific uh, type of copy in that? Uh, maybe I don't know. You are writing for fintech. You are writing for uh, coaches. You are writing for a sport. Uh, is there any um, direction that you're that you're that you're focusing on in your copywriting? Yes, I write majorly for personal development and coaches. So when people want to sell courses, sell webinars or whatever thing they want to sell, I'm really good at writing copies in that area of personal development. So those, that's my direction in copywriting. The personal satisfaction I get from or copywriting or something that really the most important part of it is the, the, the fact that is, is the research part of it for me because naturally I love to research. So this copywriting actually helps me to, you know, discover things I've not known. I'm like, okay, this exists, oh, that, oh, okay, so this. In the course of my research, I, I find that out. And that's very fulfilling for me personally, right? And then the second thing that makes it more interesting is when I see people take the action on that copy, whatever action it is. Now, it may not really be every time, buy, 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 but when I watch people take action on it, I feel fulfilled that, wow. I'm, I'm really, I'm, can I, am I this persuasive? Am I this compelling? I don't know that. So 
the, 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 the one that gives me satisfaction is research because it helps me to discover new things. And then the second thing is the fact that people take action on that copy, which further makes me feel like, you know what, I, you know what you are doing and you are able to, you know, own your craft, you know your skill. Because the whole essence of copywriting is to get people to take the action, jump on the email list, do whatever action you want them to do. And when they take that action, I feel very good about it. Now, people that are listening to you now, they hear what you have said. You have uh, shared a lot of uh, tips and strategy with them. Uh, they want to connect uh, with you. They want to do business with you. Use this few seconds to advertise yourself. Tell them how to reach you and where to connect with you. Please go ahead and do that. Okay, so if you want to reach me, I am available on LinkedIn and you can just shoot me a DM on LinkedIn or you go to my YouTube channel. You can connect with me too on my YouTube channel. I teach copywriting on my YouTube channel and the the, the handle is at a different or some. On LinkedIn, I am a different or some too on LinkedIn. So these are the two major um, channels where you can reach me to connect with me, collaborate or get me to do anything as it pertains to copywriting for you. All right, fantastic. Uh, now, what would be your final thought here to conclude the conversation? We have really uh, discussed something interesting. Please help me understand that. Okay. So I would say that every brand needs a copywriter. And I would say that everyone needs to know the skill because it's not just about writing. Copywriting helps you to sell yourself. It helps you to express yourself because we are constantly selling ourselves. So everyone, I, I always say it is a, is a basic skill. Everybody should know copywriting, even if it is not at expert level. You should have an idea of copywriting and understand the basics and be able to apply it to your day-to-day -day life. Because whether we like it or not, we are always selling ourselves. Is that you are selling yourself to your boss that you are the best person at work and he should not fire you when you wake up and go to work every day? Or you're selling your brand to your clients that you know what, you're the best person to do business with. Or you sell yourself to your spouse that you know what, you marry the best woman in the world. Or to your husband that you know what, you, you marry the best husband in the world or something like that. So we're always selling ourselves. We sell ourselves to our parents. We sell ourselves to our friends. We sell ourselves to our leaders and all the people around us. Because we always want to prove that, you know what, we are the good connection or the best people to be in your space. And if you have to do this effectively, you need to have an idea or know something about copywriting. And this is very important. So that's my final thought. Everyone should just know one or two things about copywriting. It will help them in life. Thank you so much, Adifon. I appreciate the conversation. It really have been very rich here. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come on your show and have this conversation with you. I don't take it for granted at all, at all and I feel really honored. You're welcome. It's a pleasure here. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Overhead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.